this video I would like to take the opportunity and talk a little bit about the failure to success ratio and why it's important not to give up even if it's an uphill struggle. Hello and welcome back. Over the past week I've done a lot of work with the um, engraver on PCB boards and I've had a lot of fails. Uh, in fact I think I've had more fails than I had successes but um, it was pretty important to find out a few things um, that seem to be um, happening uh, when you're doing this the way I'm doing it uh, when you're trying to develop the paint on a PCB um, with a laser and uh, with a laser diode especially with a very cheap one and that has a lot of leakage and uh, that is very hard to focus or might not focus right and where you have no idea how much power you're putting out and all these things I mean it appears to be easier to get it wrong than to get it right um, but it's also worth to stick to it because once you know what all the errors are, you can avoid them and then you'll get good results. And that's what I'm starting to get at right now. Now I've done a few tries and I've modified a few little things. Um, and uh, the first things that I did were this here. And when I was showing uh, the last board that actually worked, I said that there was some residue that took very hard, that, that took long to get off. It actually turned out that I had the power of the laser um, set far too high and I was actually burning the paint on the PCB to a point where it just wouldn't work out anymore. Focus please. And I even used a lot more of that power on this board and you can actually see that all the paint that was on there is actually uh, burned to a crisp and uh, all the layers that were supposed to um, be left over as copper actually uh, were actually removed um, but there's a very fine um, pattern in here and uh, well as it turns out this one here is just rubbish I mean it doesn't work but it's pretty good to find out how little or how much power of the laser you need before you start burning the paint instead of removing it. Um, another one that was particularly bad uh, was this one and uh, it turns out that with this one the PCB board um, was bad to begin with. Um, I don't know what happened here uh, but it wasn't anything that happened while I was uh, unpacking it or leaving it here because it didn't get exposed in a way uh, like here. So this one didn't work out either. Then I started doing a few um, with slightly changed layouts. Uh, this one was with copper pour and um, it was better but I still have way too much leakage on the laser and you can see that some of the traces are uh, far too small and there are uh, areas that uh, shouldn't have been removed like that so this one didn't work out either um, then I had a few fails with the engraver itself like this one, uh, this is just the bare board, this hasn't been in the etchant and uh, the laser failed, uh, well the, the engraver failed at about 50% um, I don't know if that's a driver issue or something similar, it just stalled um, this one here was also a fail and I regret that because this one actually looked really good um, unfortunately I have no idea where I got this PCB from um, 
uh, it was a lot better at developing and it has much uh, better edges than all the other ones that I have. But also with this one, um, the engraver failed. And that's something that I'm going to have to address in my software um, because I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's a software issue or it's a driver issue. I don't know yet. Uh, then I did uh, this one. This one was pretty nice. Um, it's a working board. Uh, what I did, I enlarged the, uh, the pads a little bit so I can, it's easier to solder them and uh, there are actually no faults on this board so this will be usable. And the last one that I did was this one. And uh, the only thing that I got wrong with this one was that the caps and resistors still have the wrong size of pads. But I will be working on that. And uh, when I'm done with it, uh, this is going to be one of the next uh, boards that I'll be putting together. And uh, funny, this one was the first one that I did. It was really the, the first one ever that I had completely developed and etched, and I think it's the best one. Um, it is. It's so good. Well, I did do some changes uh, to the engraver laser. Um, the biggest one was um, that I put some uh, masking tape. Um, right where the the beam is supposed to come out um, because the amount of uh, leakage from the laser lens uh, actually develops um, some of the some of the edges around the pads and around the traces and uh, that leads to thinner traces than I wanted to have and um, it makes the pads even smaller than they should be so that was a definite improvement and um, you might be asking yourself what all of these uh, boards are they're basically the next uh, generation of my controller boards um, which are a lot smaller than the one that I had before it has some features removed um, it will be only good for the uh, for the three axis CNC, um, the laser engraver or the, uh, or the direct ink to PCB plotter. Um, but it is substantially smaller than the old board, which means that it is easier to make it with, um, um, with the new system because um, the bigger the board, the longer it takes to expose this. Um, when I'm going slow on one of these boards, um, it takes about two hours, and um, I realize that that is not rapid prototyping anymore. Um, but the the way that this comes out is a lot finer than if I were to use the pen method. Um, I can go with uh, traces that are 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 millimeters, and that have a separation of only 0 0.2 millimeters. So the density that I can now work at is a lot better. Um, for simple boards, really simple boards, um, there's basically nothing that beats the direct ink to PCB method. And um, I'm, I'm still going to be using that, but I have so many of the direct ink to PCB uh, plotters standing around now that I don't need to use the engraver for that too. Um, I did spend some time thinking about um, making a new firmware for the uh, for the engraver that will be a lot different than the firmware that I'm using now. Uh, the firmware that I'm using now is basically interpreting uh, G-code and uh, the one that I'm programming uh, for the engraver is one that will get a uh, compressed bitmap and it will actually do a raster print of the bitmap of everything on the uh, on the board either in uh, positive or or negative uh, 
print. So that's no longer a plotter, it's more or less a printer. Um, but the benefit that I hope to have from that is that if I um, actually print one line at a time, I won't have uh, so many problems with the uh, with the spacing between pads and uh, and traces because every time I turn the laser off and on it basically changes the speed of the uh, of the print head which leads to vibration and which makes the whole thing a little bit hard to get right and if I print one line at a time with just one um, with one uh, stroke of the, of the stepper and then go back and over it again I believe that I can um, get better resolution and I get better edges than what I'm getting now uh, also the software that I used to make these uh, to make the g-code for this um, has seen some improvement and uh, it works a lot smoother than it did before and it, it accounts for, for some of the uh, for the, some of the awkward movement of the uh, of the laser head, and that's what I'm working on right now. But it's pretty important to say this. Um, I've had so many failures, uh, and I was pretty frustrated. But it was quite important to keep going. And uh, if anyone beside me is doing something like that, I can just encourage them: uh, keep going, nonetheless. Um, you're gonna get it right sometime. You just you just have to be there when it happens, and uh, it actually means don't stop before you get it right and think about what you're doing and and everything like that. Um, so for today, that's the end of the video. Um, as you can see, there's going to be a lot more coming up uh, with this machine. I've had some talks with. Uh, with a company who makes these aluminum profiles and and bearings and everything um, and they were interested in uh, doing something together with me um, but I don't know maybe they lost interest I haven't heard from them since um, I'm gonna get this one done and when I'm done with this board I'm going to uh, I'm going to put up a new version of my firmware that will support this board I'm going to put uh, the design files and the, the G-code and uh, bitmap files for this um, in my GitHub repo and also the changes to the v4 firmware and um, if I get enough time I might actually also put the um, the firmware for the engraver mode uh, for this on GitHub as well but that's not very far yet once again, thanks for watching and bye bye.